controlling the lights. Oh, okay. Good. <laughs> Shabbat shalom, everyone. There, I can see you a little better. All right. We love each one of you. Thank you for coming today. Uh, we've got a lot of room, so just make yourself comfortable. Uh, we're excited to have three of the greatest worship leaders in the world as far as I'm concerned. We kind of broke into the Messianic worship with uh, Brother Marty Getz and, and Brother Paul and then Joshua Aaron come along. And uh, I tell you, they have all blessed our hearts and they're gonna come, they've come here to bless your heart tonight. Hallelujah. Our goal tonight is to welcome and entertain the presence of Almighty God. And we know, we know the, the songs, the music, and the singers are anointed. And now let our worship be anointed together. Let's pray as we open this worship night tonight. Father, we thank you again. We, we invite your presence into this building, into this place. But Lord, we also know that that, that comes from within us. As we pour out our hearts to you in worship, singing and praising, Lord, you will begin to fill this room as you have filled our hearts. There's nothing that can hold your presence. But Lord, we're asking you now to anoint and bless and move through every word, every song, every note. Let your hedge of protection be about this place. And Lord, just fill us up tonight with your glory in Yeshua's mighty name. Let's worship the Lord. With Brother Paul Wilbur. Give him a good hand tonight. Well, bless the Lord. been to Meridian twice three times well now you sound like my wife don't you remember the I had planned to come out and just start with a big boom, boom, boom. And Chuck already ruined that, so. What key are you in there, Brother Greg? A flat. I know, I know. So instead, I think we're going to start here. Mm -hmm. Just let me have this one and you can, you'll find me. We, uh, 
we have such a rare privilege tonight, this afternoon, whatever time it is. I was just praying with my brothers back here, and uh, I don't I don't know if it's my age or if it's the female hormone blockers I'm taking or whatever it might be. Sorry if that offended anyone, but you know it is what it is. And I'm just so grateful. We live in an amazing country. And the Lord has selected a time for us where our lives can be joined together, three Jews on this cruise, to worship the Lord together, no fear that secret police or somebody who hates us are going to break through the doors. One of my best friends is a black brother sitting on the keyboards, traveled with me for 15 years. And this is the first time I was telling Brother Chuck on the way in on the plane last night, actually all day. <laughs> it took me 13 hours to get here from Jacksonville, Florida. Yeah, God bless the airlines, they, they need it. But I was listening to conversations from people. There were two stops once we got to Houston we had to stop in some place, Hattie's something. Thank you. And we let some people off, nobody got on, and then we continued on to Meridian. And I was, I was listening to the conversations of total strangers. Different ages, different skin tones, probably lots of different approaches to faith but they were also kind to each other and gracious and preferred each other. Can I help you get your bag out? And I th what planet did I land on? So just if you think you're stuck in podunk, you are blessed. You're blessed. And as we're praying back here, I, it was hard for me to keep the tears of gratitude back as I'm looking at Marty Getz and Joshua Aaron and my brother Greg. And we have decades of life and ministry going every which way, but it seems now in this season, we were just together in, in Cleveland, Tennessee, and before that, and now again tonight. And the, the joy of walking together with brothers who have a similar ministry, you know, in, in song and, and worship and whatever, but without the sense of uh, who's going first and are, are you opening for me or... Just the sense, as, as Brother Chuck was saying, we came to worship. The only important thing is that we see him, that he feels comfortable here. Lord, you're welcome in this place. Bienvenido, Señor, en este lugar. If that's the last trumpet, I'd like to call my wife. <laughs> She's expecting me tomorrow. Yeah, she's probably going ahead of me. She's, 
She got a higher number. She's really saved. Anyway. The Spirit of the Lord is here. The Spirit of the Lord is upon us because he's anointed us to sing and speak and preach good news to the poor, to bind up the brokenhearted, to set at liberty those who are bound, to declare the acceptable year of the Lord, and to warn the folks that there is a day of his vengeance that is coming. But there is a strong tower of safety, and all you have to do is run into that name, and you will be safe. So whatever key I've found, Greg, I knew you'd find me. You are welcome in this place, be enthroned upon our praises. May our worship rise like incense as we magnify the sun. Mighty God of Israel, you're the Lamb upon the throne. All blessing and honor to our God forevermore. Even so, even so. on your throne, Jerusalem. Come and take your place on your throne, Jerusalem. 
So, Lord, we invite you tonight. Come and take your place. As we enter your gates with thanksgiving and your courts with praise. We say this is the day that you've made. We will rejoice, clap our hands, and be glad. Come on, get up out of those chairs. You've been sitting way too long. Let God arise. Oh, yeah. This is your part. Oh, yeah. Let God arise. Come on, choir. Oh, yeah. enemies sky let them flee from before him as smoke is driven away come on Lord drive them away far away
so good. His name is El Shaddai. His name is El Elyon. His name is Yeshua HaMashiach. And his name is Adonai. Every time 
Come on, sing this to him. You are Lord. You are Lord over all the earth. You are Lord over all the earth. Sing it to the throne. You are Lord. You are Lord over all the earth. You are Lord over all the earth. You are Lord. You are Lord. Come on, sing it again. You are Lord over all the earth. You are Lord. Jesus is the Lord over all the earth. You are Lord. You are Lord. within me. Bless his holy name. Mm. I didn't really introduce my friend to you, Greg Shoemake. We met each other back in Colorado Springs. Oh, you've heard of Colorado? Um, it's cooler there. Uh, Colorado Springs back in 19 something. 1990s. 93 or 4. And um, we were thrown together to do it. Shalom Jerusalem had just come out. And, um, and a pastor there, a big church, wanted to do a live presentation of Shalom Jerusalem. Now, if you're familiar with my music, we don't do four chord chorus stuff. Um, we, yeah, it's, it's fun, there's music, there's melody, there's musicianship, we, we use brass and strings, and so I thought, there's no way we're going to be able to do this live, oh, and the pastor said, well, Tonight, there's a rehearsal. The four guys that are going to join you are practicing upstairs. I thought, Lord, please just give me some grace. I'll tell them no gently, and then we'll just do something else. And I walked up to the room, and they were, they were practicing that uh, big number. Shout so joy. And do sound the tents of the righteous of the Lord. Shout some joy. And it's got digga 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 the violins are there's smoke coming off the violin. Digga 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 digga. And it's tough. It's really tough. It's musicians only. Everybody else, good luck. And I looked over and this guy was playing it note for note. I said, Well, I guess we're gonna be okay. He's, uh, he's a dear friend. He's traveled with me all over the world, and he's, he's such a blessing. It's such a wonderful thing to have him with me tonight. Say hello to Greg Shoemake. And from the rising of the sun to the place where it goes down, 
The name of the Lord is forever to be praised. Desde el amanecer hasta el atardecer, alaba a Donai, porque tu voz, Señor, tu voz es vuestro de vida.
to the end of every day soon. COVID seems like it was so far back in the rearview mirror, and yet some folks are still feeling the effects of all of that with the separation and the masks and even some real loss. In the midst of that, we gathered our whole family. We were spread all over the map. My second son and his wife living in L.A., they came and moved back in with us. And um, my sister in town, and my firstborn son just two blocks away. And it was a strange time for us because our lives have always been sitting on airplanes, buses, trains, and planes, and traveling the world and singing to and about Yeshua and the good news in lots of languages. But we found ourselves in a place where the planes weren't flying, we weren't allowed to gather and so we gathered in our home. And one morning, my daughter-in-law, I don't like the in-law thing. Um, she happens to be Joel Chernoff's daughter from the group Lamb way back when Abraham Lincoln was president. But um, don't tell him I said that. Because uh, I was there with him at the same time. Uh, anyway. But when she married my son, she became our family, and to me, she's flesh and blood. Anyway, one morning, I was in my office, sitting at my computer, and she brought in her Bible, and she said, Dad, look at this. I, I think there's a good song here. She was in Second Chronicles chapter 20. You know this story very well. Jehoshaphat was surrounded, outnumbered experts, whoever they are, say about 200 to 1. And the very next day was the day they were going to be wiped off the map, according to Las Vegas. Las Vegas had them down uh, 200 to 1. The odds were not good. But instead of panicking, Jehoshaphat calls a prayer meeting. <laughs> Amazing. A king, a president, instead of calling for help from the Egyptians or the whoever's, he calls on heaven. I believe. I believe. 
that a time is coming again for America when we will have a White House that calls on heaven We will have a Congress that opens every session with a bended knee because we are one nation under God, this God, this God, no other God, this God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He established this nation. He's kept us and protected us from our foolishness and our wayward ways. And I believe a day is coming when those who sit in places of authority will recognize they only have that place because of him, not because of a number of votes. I believe, I believe the day is coming. And so Jehoshaphat called a prayer meeting and everybody gathered. It was... It was a time when they knew it's, it's life or death. Even as he said to Moses, I set before you today life or death, blessing or cursing. Choose life. Thankfully, Jehoshaphat and Judah in those days chose life. They called on him. And in the midst, a prophet stood up and gave those precious words. People... I'm going to edit. I know it looks bad. But go out tomorrow and stand before them. The victory is yours because the battle is the Lord's. And that's where this song comes from. The battle is yours, the victory is mine. 
Amen. Come on, give the Lord some praise in this place tonight. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Uh, the scriptures talks about another valley. Another valley full of dry bones. Twice dead. Ezekiel says they were very, very dry. And the Spirit of the Lord spoke to the prophet, and he said, Son of man, can these dry bones live again? And the prophet wisely said, Lord, only you know. But then heaven spoke again, and he said, Son of man, open up your mouth and prophesy to these dry bones. Call to the wind, the north, the south, the east, and the west, and say to those bones, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. I hear the sound of the Spirit.
voice of the watchman cried from his place on the wall. A weak and remnant of Zion, salvation for all is right. O Lord, and breathe on these dry bones that we might live again. He trains my hands for war and my fingers for battle. There is a brother born for a time of adversity. The kingdom of God suffers violent, but there is a violent force that will take it by force. Are there any of those in this place tonight? We're violent in our praise. We're violent in our prayers. This is war. Every day, every day, we war for our lives, for our families, for our communities, for our nations. This is war. The enemy has taken off the disguise and he's taken off the gloves. After October 7th, I wear my dad's World War II dog tags every day. He flew 35 missions in a B-17 over Nazi Germany as a Jewish man with a Jewish pilot. 
And he told my mom that because of the terrible anti-Semitism that he grew up in in the 1920s and the 1930s in the Northeast, these United States, they issued the, every guy a sidearm, 45. But he put only one bullet in there, he told my mom. Because he knew that if he was shot down, what happens to Jews in Germany? And yet, even facing that, he climbed into that tail section of that B-17 35 times. And he put his life in the hands of a God that he had heard about but didn't know personally. Many years later, when I gave my life to Yeshua, I told him. His response was, you need help. He wanted me to see a psychiatrist, someone who could help me work through this delusion that Jesus of the Gentiles could possibly be our Messiah. And then to make it worse, I joined a Messianic synagogue with Sid Roth. Ay, 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 ay. What was I thinking? And after he heard that, now that I had a master's degree and my goal was to be a cantor and an opera singer. He was okay with the opera singer part, and he would put up with the cantor part. But when I joined a Messianic synagogue, became a cantor there, he called me one day and he said, why are you doing this to me? He took it so personally that that Jewish blood that he had tried to hide, run away from, disguise, and fight against Nazi Germany at the risk of his own life 35 times, was now back in his face again by his firstborn son. While he watched, he listened, and thankfully, some years later, my dad called me, he said, son, I'm sorry. I was wrong. Please forgive me. Can you tell me someplace that I can get dunked like all the rest of you nuts? He got dunked really good. And before he passed, just before his 90th birthday, he said, please forgive me. I hated who God had made me. But I've learned, because of you, I've learned to love the God who made me and who he made me. And I want you to do what you're doing until your very last breath. And so, that's what I'm doing here. I'm just doing what my dad told me to do. My heavenly father, he told me this is what you're to do. 
And you'll hear the same from Marty. And you'll hear the same from Joshua in just a few minutes. And I want you to hear this from me before this last song. If you've resisted this good news, if you thought you could run and hide, and maybe someday, somewhere, somehow, it would make sense to you, and you pointed to all those folks in the news who said they were followers of Jesus, but they missed the mark terribly and used them as an excuse, there is a day when you will stand before this king and they will no longer be a good excuse for you. Yeshua HaMashiach Hu Adonai, Jesus the Messiah, he is Lord. He gave his life on Passover. He was raised from the dead on the Feast of First Fruits. And he was seen by thousands who then cast their lives at his feet and said, my Lord and my God. And he's alive today. And my Bible says that if you will say with your heart, I know, I believe. If you'll confess with your mouth, Yeshua is Lord. Believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead. You will be saved. I did it all by myself in Bumpus Mills, Tennessee right next door to Bucksnort, Tennessee. All by myself. I didn't know all the words to say, but I simply said, Lord, I believe. Here's my life. And that was 47 years ago this last March 26th. And I've never been the same since. I want you to know that in the midst of all of these songs, if I'm speaking to you, this is your God speaking to you. He loves you. And like my dad, he's hoping you'll lay down your pride and your excuses. And you'll just say, Jesus, here's my life. If that's you tonight, I want to help you. I'm, I'm going to pray with you right now. Just quietly, right where you are. I'm not going to make a show of you or ask you to sing with me. Although I could use the help. If I'm speaking to you. Would you bow your head and pray with me, Father? I come to you now because I need you. I believe that Jesus is Lord. I believe you raised him from the dead for me. And I confess with my mouth, Yeshua, Jesus, your Lord, here's my life. Take it and use it for your glory. I give it to you now. Forgive me. Cleanse me. Fill me with your spirit. Raise me from this death. And I'll serve you all the days of my life. Amen. Amen. When we're all finished tonight, there are some tables somewhere with some music and stuff. And I'll be there. And if you prayed that with me, I'd like to meet you. I have a gift for you. 
But until I see you later, we got one more song. And then we got some more songs. Greg is really good at reading lips. <laughs> Let's try this one. Yep. A one, two, three. <laughs> Sin on every side. Pick 
the Lord, oh my soul. Well, stay on your feet if you're up there and welcome my dear friend, Marty Getz. Come on, Marty. How about Paul Wilbur? How about that guy? Nobody does it better. And how about this guy, Greg? I see him, Ace. 